can already see it's over here. Stop it, this is sick. Oh. oh, stop it. Have a look at this thing. Oh, no. man. I, I've got nothing to say. This is unreal. Wow. Oh, man, the camera boys won't know themselves. This will be one of the hardest working full drives in Australia, and we needed a canopy that could stand up to that task. This has definitely got to be the best setup camera car we've ever had. It's so good that some absolute grubs broke in and tried to steal it, and you won't believe what happened. Unless you've been living under a rock, you would know that a couple of months ago, we bought the camera boys a new camera car. We needed something that was reliable, has a high GVM and was easy to maintain. So we bought this beauty, but she certainly doesn't look like this anymore. You might think you may know how to pack half the house into your Forby on a trip, but I wager you've got nothing on the camera guys. These guys travel with an incredible amount of tools and spares to shoot out shows, and they know how to make the most out of every spare inch of space available, and then some. And when it comes to canopy layout, their number one priority is going to be to make use of every bit of room they can find. We've been running Mitz Alloy gear in our convoy for a couple of years now on Graham's D-Max, and with the trips that Tim and the boys from the workshop have been on testing their gear, it was a no-brainer to put one of their canopies and trays on the vehicle. The camera crew have tried and tested heaps of different setups in the past, but all have been wagons with limited space. So, the reason we went with the canopy is it gives the boys heaps more space to work with when it comes to both camera gear storage as well as touring and camping gear. It also allows the two to be separate, so the boys can have dedicated room on one side of the canopy to work out of and a separate side for living out of. This will be one of the hardest working full drives in Australia, and we needed a canopy that could stand up to that task. But the camera crew definitely needed something a bit different from the usual, having to live and work out of this vehicle for five months of the year. That's where the MITS in-house designer working alongside our producer came up with this absolute cracker. The best setup camera car we've ever had. Stop it, have a look at this thing. Hey Jocko. Oh eh? man, as how are you mate? Good mate. Just what do you reckon? I, I've got nothing <laughs> to say. This is unreal. It has turned out mint. Wow. Man. Oh man, the camera boys won't know but, <laughs> themselves. This is luxury, isn't it? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You boys have outdone yourselves. Well, uh, how about you take me through it, eh? Show yeah. us what you've done. Yeah, let's have a look, mate. Cool. The current living situation in the GU is a bit tight on space. When the boys are running three in the camera car, there's no room to store any clothes, bags or personal items, so they have to chuck them in one of the other vehicles while travelling. Another big drawback of the old GU was the lack of table space for the boys to dump footage and organise gear. They ran a small table for a laptop as well as the food drawer table which doubled as a workstation, proving pretty inconvenient when it came time to eat. You can also see that anything that didn't fit into those drawers like tools, spares and camping gear was packed very tightly above them proving a challenge if you needed to access anything in the back. Now you might notice that, yeah, there's a fridge and a drawer here, but there's quite an open space, and on that side there's a bit of room there as well. And the reason for that is, one of the best ways to figure out how you want your storage setup to be is to go out with it as a basic setup and then build from it from there. What the canopy has allowed us to do is to have the living and working areas on two separate sides. It means that anything the crew needs to carry, whether it be clothes, food or beers, they now have a dedicated space to both store and access them, which is separated from all the camera gear and workstation, which we'll get into next. A big change that you've probably noticed is that the crew have opted for an upright over a chest fridge. The main reason for this is once again to utilise all the space. A stand-up fridge allows us to push it right up against a 12 volt on one side and a drawer on the other, and it also means we lose the fridge slide, helping to reduce overall weight in the vehicle. Next to the fridge is one of MIT's newly designed drawers, with a pull-out table giving the boys plenty of usable kitchen space while still allowing access to the fridge. Next up, we're going to be looking at fuel, water and tool storage for the big GU, but first, check out this awesome new range from Snatch. Well folks, it has been nearly a year, but the wait has been worth it. Snatch has finally got a new clothing range out and it is mental. Now look, we've got new hoodies, new tees, long sleeves and trackies. There's heaps of new designs and colours as well as some updates to the old favourites like the winch hoodie. 
Like always, all the new designs are insanely comfy and super high quality. They're made to be worn on the tracks, at camp, or out on a date. The new lineup from Snatch is gonna go absolutely mental. Jump online right now, check it all out, grab yourself some gear. Trust me, it's not gonna last, so get in fast. Snatch, you've done it again. Well, up the back, still looking unreal. So you might notice here we've got twin jerrys, the ladder, and the spare tire holder as well. Now, you're probably wondering why twin jerrys? Well, that's for in situations like in the Kimberley or Arnhem Land or something like that where- You need more water. More water it's and- simple. Yeah, more diesel. And you know, yeah. the camera boys are running around in the heat. They go through a lot yeah, of water. A lot. And the vehicle's got to carry that as well. Yep. This is a big improvement on the current water tank setup. The old GU is running a 30 litre gravity fed water tank. The hose runs out of the rear right hand side. And if you have the drawer out while cooking or organizing gear, there's nearly no room left to access it. Another issue on the bigger trips was the fact that with limited storage space, the crew couldn't carry any of their own spare fuel, meaning that already limited room had to be found in other vehicles in the convoy. Under the tray, we'll show you that in a sec, there's a 60 litre water tank under the tray. Yep. Yep, and, and a 30, 30 litre on, on the headboard. headboard. And it's perfect having the individual tanks for the big trips. You got the 60 liters underneath, yep. and then you got the 30 the for smaller ones as well. You can fill these two up. You got 130 all up. Yeah, or they can be, you know, fuel, fuel if you need yep. it as well, which is awesome. Yep. But it's really important on those bigger trips as well not to have all your water and fuel yep. in one spot if you can avoid it. So yep. that's perfect for that. Well, the camera boys are used to carrying big, heavy cameras on their shoulders, but. Yep. Make it easy to get to the roof for them. So fold yeah, down the ladder. Throw their swags up. 100%. This is the same style you've got on Graham's D-Max too, hey? The same yep. sort of fold These down. These are all our standard yeah. options. You also might notice that we've gone for one spare. And the reason for that is because we've got a lot of room with this vehicle too, we don't need two spares all the time. So one spare always. And on the bigger trips, there is still plenty of storage here to yeah. put the second spare. Yeah, you've got the full length roof rack yeah, up the there. the carcass up there or something like that. Yep. So that's Behind unreal. the solar panel, so heaps of space. The logic behind running only one spare came from the fact that the camera crew has only needed two spares once on a trip in the last four years, and even then, one of the spares was for another vehicle in the convoy. When we do run two spares, an advantage of not having both on the rear of the vehicle means it's much better for weight distribution. Having more of the weight evenly distributed in the canopy means that the vehicle will handle better on and off-road, and there'll be less wear and tear on parts in the vehicle. Can't miss this too, mate. Under here, Still a lot of storage, mate. Under tray trundle. Now again, this is where having the extra storage space for the stuff the camera boys won't use all the time, like tools and spares for being spares a patrol, a it's probably gonna break all the time. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding, it won't break at all. So heaps of room in here. They've got a table on here for prep. So this yeah. slides forward, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. so they can even Slide just do- forward, take it out. That's unreal. And there's still so much room in there heaps for all their mate. stuff. I mean, you could even make one of the boys could be logging footage back yeah. here and stuff like that. That's unreal. Like I mentioned earlier, the camera crew have to work out of this setup for around five months of the year, so a really essential part of this canopy fit out was the design of the workstation. The previous setup had a little space for the crew to use a laptop and upload footage, as well as to set up and clean gear each day. We've currently gone with a basic two drawer setup to house the cameras, but have plans to add an additional drawer and shelf to use as camera gear storage and a charging station for the huge amount of battery power the crew needs to use every day. One of the awesome things about MITS canopies is that they're modular and it's so easy to just add drawers and shelves depending on what your needs are. This would be perfect for the boys after a couple of trips. If they realize they want to change setups, it's super easy and they can do it with one spanner. How unreal is that? So plenty of room still for all their gear. Yep. But the thing I really want to talk about are these two drawers. Yeah. So we've designed these. Well, you know, the, ca the camera yeah. boys, mate, they're expensive cameras. Now their cameras are quite heavy. They're also quite expensive, but they need to be able to access them quickly. So it's quite a difficult problem to solve with storage and quick access for gear that's heavy. But the beauty about it is you guys have absolutely nailed this, I reckon. They've yep. solved the design problem beautifully with these drawers. And the way they work is you've got two, one for each camera. So we've got two camera operators for motion. So A and B camera, one will go in here, one will go in here, and they'll be standing up in some foam. And quick access when you need them. Yep. And then behind here, you've got this divider yeah. too. So Fully you're removable. 100%. So that can slide in and out so they can store batteries and stuff like that. This will make the boys' lives oh, so I'm much easier. Just sure that. Sure, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> absolutely unreal. You guys have really knocked it out of the park with just, it's those little things, really thinking yep. about how they're going to operate out in the field because, you know, it's... It's, it's got to be quick and easy. 100%. And it's hard shooting out in yep. the bush. So if you can make this 
easier for the camera boys, then it just makes their job makes that much nicer. Everyone's job easier. The hardest work is in the convoy, mate. Yeah. They need to make it nice. <laughs> A few of you in the comments on the last episode pointed out that sometimes we have a stills photographer along with us on the trips, and we also need a third seat. Well, you're not wrong there, but in this case, we reckon the compromise for having heaps more space for the crew in exchange for sacrificing the third seat meant that the photographer can jump in with any other vehicle in the convoy. Now, continuing the theme with heaps of storage, we've got the under-tray toolboxes again. Yeah. Storage everywhere, so mate. So much. And also under here, you'll notice you've got the fillers for the diesel. So you've got the main here and sub here. And then yep. on the other side, you've got the outlets for the for water, water tanks. Yeah, yep. 100%. Now, the awesome thing about this is you'll notice this box is a little bit shorter. Obviously, that allows for the diesel filler. But a real trick thing is the departure angle on this yep. as well. Keeping that a bit shorter means that, you know, on Less steep breakages, angles, 100%. Yep. We're not going to damage as many things. No, that's unreal. <laughs> Now, you probably noticed there is a mental 12 volt system in here. We've been talking about how much power the camera boys need out on the trip. So, as why don't you take us through us, mate? Because this looks unreal. The 12 volt system is the heart and soul of the camera car. Without it, there are no cameras, and without cameras, well, there's no show. That's why we have to make sure that it caters to the huge power demands the crew use and it's reliable and functional at the same time. We're not putting in a massive 12 volt setup just to run a coffee machine. This 12 volt setup is gonna work hard and be used every single day. The old GU ran two lithiums which charged off the crank battery and the alternator. This was great for times when we had long drives, but if the vehicle sat somewhere for extended periods of time, often the batteries would start to run low. With the new setup, we've opted for two new lithiums with the potential to expand to three if the demands are required. A big reason we didn't upgrade to 3 is because the new camera car is going to be running a Schmick 180 watt solar panel on top, fixing that problem of draining power while stationary. So we all know the camera boys take a hell of a lot of gear. This one, we've gone all out, we've done the Red Arc Ultimate system in here. We're talking 2000 watt inverter, 200 amp hours of power. So on this side, as you can see, we've got the Red Vision screen. This, this screen here controls the whole system. We've got your 2000 watt inverter up the front here, which the boys can simply just plug in a, a power board or a cord. With this system as well, it's got the Manager 30. That chooses where it gets all the power from. So from the alternator, 240. So when the boys aren't using the, the camera car itself, they can plug it in back at the office, keep the whole system charged up, ready to go at a moment's notice. And then while they're out in the tracks, we're throwing a big 180 watt solar panel up there. So they're gonna have plenty of power for days. How unreal is that, mate? This four-wheel drive is gonna be one of the hardest working vehicles in the country. So the 12-volt system needed to live up to that. Yeah. You know, it's not gonna be powering the fridge and camp lights, you know, a couple of times a year or something no. like that. This is gonna be worked hard all the time. All day, every day. You've absolutely nailed it with that 12-volt setup and the whole canopy in general. I'm sure they're gonna love it. They will, yeah, <laughs> they will. I mean, you're probably watching this as a camera guy right behind there the whole time he's been filming this with a smile on his face, so. They're stoked. Yeah, they are. They do well deserved as well. Absolutely, man. They, they work hard harder than everyone on the show. They sure. do, they do. They deserve <laughs> a little treat every now and then. Yeah, a little treat. <laughs> well, the team at MITS have done an unreal job on the new canopy and tray with the big GU. Just like everything that rolls out of the factory here in Newcastle, it's an absolute work of art. And I cannot wait to see what the camera crew do with it and setting it up and getting it out into the bush and using it. They're not gonna know themselves working out of a setup like this and it's well deserved too, because this is the best setup camera car we've ever had. And I can't wait to see where it goes. Not done yet with the big GU though, because I'm gonna drop it off at Pinnacle 4x4 for a whole bunch of mods to the engine. We've got some suspension work planned, plus a whole bunch more bits and pieces. So make sure you keep an eye on our YouTube page and all our social media for updates on the big GU before a maiden voyage. All right, time to get her on the road. Catch you next time, mate. But just as we were on our way up to Pinnacle, while the vehicle was parked in a car park overnight, some absolute grubs broke into it and made an absolute mess. They busted the locks and ignition barrel, ruined the wiring loom trying to hotwire it and ripped out the stereo. The scariest part, they actually got it started because it wasn't where we parked it, but the steering wheel was locked so they couldn't get it anywhere. It's a scary reminder that scumbags are out there trying to steal four wheel drives like this. We got away with it this time and we'll definitely be prioritising security mods on this beast to keep it more secure. Make sure you tune in next episode because we'll take you through how we're going to fix all this damage, plus we'll show you a bunch of sick mods that you can do to make your higher kilometre common rail ultra reliable so you can take it anywhere you want.